to Fred 2019, Naked and Fred. Yes, thank you very much for coming this year. We are very happy to have all of you. Yes. Since Fred has been going on for, you know, a few years now, Ava and I decided that we should sort of shake things up a bit, all right? That, so. That's right. This year, instead of just opening the auditions to students, we had some teachers audition as well. Exactly. <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. We're going to give teachers a specific scenario, act out as a specific character. And we're going to judge them just like we judge any other student, all right? So I believe the teacher who signed up for the first slot is, uh, oh yes, Kurt Markle. Oh, good morning, please. Oh, uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Markle. It's actually, in fact, not morning. Uh, it, it's all right. He's just never been here past 4 p.m., so he doesn't know what to say. Um, so, Kurt, excuse me. Mr. Markle, here is your scenario. You are in China, and you would like to get a car for your little kid. But, because you're in China, you know, there's a little bit of a language barrier, so you have to use your hands to gesticulate enormously to get your message across, all right? Take it away. Okay, I got it. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Markle, Kurt, oh, where are you Mr. actually going? What? This, this, is, this is soap. I decided to make my own cart. <laughs> Instead, look, it can roll around. It even has wheels. Oh, so you made a car for an acting audition. I, I don't think we're going to be able to accept that. So we're just going to have to say, uh, see you later then. Yeah, have a nice day, Mr. Markle. That's okay. I can't go to any of the other, can't go, I can't go to any of the shows anyway because of my children. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to fix my hair and my cat wouldn't come out from under my bed. Oh. Kurt. Allison, I see you have forgotten to wear your Canadian flag two days. How dare you do such a train on his hat! Well, I didn't know what to expect from someone from Toronto. Says you from Windsor. Canada! You don't even know how to curl. Oh! You are looking at the Queen Victoria Memorial High School of Future Dog Sledders Curling Club captain for the past 10 years. Oh! I bet you can't even recite the full history of our Canadian land. Oh! Get out of here! That's enough! Get out of here! You two are crazy! Get out of here! These are our petitions! What are you doing? Gosh! Oh, hi there, Mr. Tebbets. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm quite all right. I just had a nice snack. Calorie students? Oh! Oh, wow, I did not miss hearing that. No, not a single bit. Um, well, we were actually going to have a bunch of... <laughs> oh, no, I have my own monologue all prepared. <laughs> all right, well, I, I guess that's all fine and good then. Take it away. <laughs> Chapter 1, Section 1. Ancient peoples come to the Americas. The first Americans may have arrived as early as 22,000 years ago. Ice Age glaciers had frozen vast quantities of the Earth's oceans, lowering sea levels enough to expose a land bridge between Asia and Alaska. Ancient hunters trekked across this frozen land, now called Berinia, into North America. That is the opening quote from Holt McDougall's masterpiece, The Americans. It is the textbook for my U.S. history to be <laughs> Right, yes, that is terrible. All right, so, um, Mr. Tebbets, I think we've seen enough here. We're just going to have to say, uh, see you later. All righty, no problem, students. Uh, what do you... Is that... Is, it, <laughs> you, is, it a did, did, is uh, that an entire... You've just pulled out an entire... Where did that even come from? Bye-bye. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs>
Nice. That was wonderful. Sublime. Wow. Really great. Did someone need the OG herself? Oh, Madame, I did not expect you to be here today. How did you uh, get here, actually? Oh, I find my ways. Okay, so I was thinking for my friend audition that I could make it a little educational, too. Whatever works best for you, Madame. Okay, merci. Hit it, DJ. by which you find which chocolates to put in your Valentine's Day box. Obviously, you know, some chocolates will be more in your face than others. But the unsung hero is the chocolatier who made the delicious truffles. Wow. <laughs> I have never had anything better explained to me in my entire life. Everybody, one, two, three! <laughs> wow, thank you so much, Mr. Cheryl. Have a nice day. All righty, I'll be seeing you around. <laughs> You know what, actually, I've just decided like, oh, Who's okay. our next audition? Uh, I don't really even know anymore. Oh, God, this is a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> She's exaggerating, don't they? Trust me, just sit there and let me do my job, and by the end of the day, you'll be a free man. Fine. No objections, Your Honor. I knew you'd cave. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said I knew you'd cave. You got no backbone, son. You're like a sad little flower. I don't think it's appropriate for you to be talking- Matt, don't talk back to the judge. It makes him look aggressive. Yeah, but did you hear what you were saying about me and- Emma? Just sit there and be quiet. Fine. <laughs> You're a wimp. Miss <laughs> Jones, the night of the assault, you and my client want a date. Is that correct? Yes. I want to go to movies, but he wanted to update his Pinterest board. <laughs> wow, he's such a girl. That's it. I do things, okay? I work out. We go to the gym all the time. Tell them out. It's true. You should see him try to lift weights. It's like watching a baby horse try to stand for the first time. 
first time. <laughs> Fine. Then how can I do this? <laughs> Is this table bolted? It's bolted, everyone. Confirmation. Let it be known that the table was bolted. Defendant shrieks like a woman. I do not shriek! <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid chair! In case this mess, you and the little lady can go home. Thank you, Your Honor. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to her. <laughs> That's it. I did it, okay? Confession. Maybe now you'll see that I'm not a man to be trifled with. Did, did you just say you're not a man? <laughs> well, in the context of the situation... Case dismissed. No, but Your Honor, I really am guilty. Sure you are, sweetie. Now let's get you home. I hurt my foot. I know, I know. <laughs> Hello, Frontier Regional. I am John the Don, and this is our 227th annual Poetry Slam. And we have some unrecognized talent here just waiting to float forth and inundate the audience with knowledge. Now, without further ado, our first poet, Lydia. <laughs> I got food poisoning from a burger I found on the ground. <laughs> it looked good, but the beef was bad. It looked delicious, but the patty was deceased. It looked tasty, but that meat was tainted. Did I spray it with Windex just like my mother taught me? Did I let it marinate overnight in mouthwash, just like my grandmother used to do? Of course. What, you think I'm an idiot? Three hours in the microwave did nothing to stop the germs. <laughs> or me. Because I ate the burger I found on the ground, or maybe it was the burger on the ground that found me. <laughs> now I am 20% woman, 80% hookworms, and I am suing Burger King for $15 million. Now when they take my order, I say one whopper. Hold the ground. I lost 30 pounds in three days from food poisoning. Thank you. Wow, what an awakening that was. These are the things you would never think about from students like those at Frontier Regional. Open your eyes. Now, for our next poet, JT. <laughs> When you see me, you know it's my body. When my hips curve under my dress. But that is not all that I am. I am also a terrible beekeeper. When you see me, you look straight at my chest. You notice my lips. But that is not all that I am. I also own thousands of bees and keep them in a Jeep Grand Cherokee that I call a Beep Grand Cherokee Keeper which I never go inside of because I'm afraid of all the bees. <laughs> when you see me, you think about who I've touched or who I've kissed, but not about how many times I've been to the hospital for trying to extract honey from a Jeep by rolling down the window and using a hockey stick to scrape the honeycomb only to be stung by literally hundreds of bees. When you see me, you don't see me at all because to you, I'm just another woman who probably has received multiple injunctions from the city with the illegal beekeeping situation in my Jeep that has caused a massive infestation to spread throughout my cold day sack. Even though the opposite is true, I am doing court on Monday for this very reason. So the next time you see me, take a good, long look. Because I am more than what you see when you look at me. I am the world's worst beekeeper. And I am probably going to jail. <laughs> Oh, Carol, you're bad. Okay, I'll go first. 
My goal is to fall back in love with my husband. Um, I want to see him play a little, and uh, I want to be wooed. <laughs> okay, okay. I just want to like slow down, you know? I really want to relax, and I want to cook more. Okay, um, I'll go. I really want to consider more about what I'm putting in my body, and I want to take more photographs. <laughs> and, uh, this year I'd like to avenge the death of my father. <laughs> he was taken from me ten years ago, and I plan to exact revenge on the people who took him from me. Um, I just really want to set up my Kindle. Uh, okay, um, that's great, everybody. How about we take those vision boards out that we've all been working on? Denise, would you like to go first? These are some images that I find inspirational. These are fresh cut peonies. This is Jennifer Hudson. This is yogurt. And this is an angel. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so this is me. This is me standing over my dad. And this is me screaming, No! <laughs> This is kind of really the before, and this is kind of really the after. Uh, PJ, are you holding a human head? Yeah, yeah, I am. This is the head of Ralph Scorpion Diamante. He is, he is the man who took my father from me, and someday I'll put red axes in his own blood over his eyes. And coincidentally, I also have yogurt. <laughs> PJ, we can tell you're very serious about your goals. Uh, who's next? Uh, okay, I wish I had gone before PJ. Um, this is my dream kitchen. It's a Hampton style. I just really like the copper features and the airiness of it. Nice. Anyone else? Oh, I made another one. It's kind of really neat. This is Rose Scorpion's inner circle. <laughs> Sorry, PJ, why are you on there? Oh, very astute. I've managed to infiltrate El Scorpion's inner circle, mainly through sex. I, I consider my body a tool, not unlike a Swiss Army knife. And I love that sweater, by the way. Uh, thank you. That's a very cute blazer. I don't even remember where I got it. Uh... Oh yeah, and Taylor Loft. Uh, okay. Uh, did anyone and everyone bring an object that inspires them? Oh yes, I did. This is my own personal copy of Under the Tuscan Sun with Diane Lane. And I don't know, I just, I really like the message she gives. She reminds me that us, as ladies, are kind of like fine lines. Wow, I love the message of that. I would love to borrow it from you sometime. Okay, I brought a box. Each time I've eliminated someone over the course of my journey, I've taken a trophy and I've put it in this here box. But I will warn you, the contents, once seen, cannot be unseen. So are you guys ready? No, 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 no that's okay. No, I, I think we're no. good. Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys sure? Yeah, yeah we're sure. Uh, okay. All right. It was mostly ears and one penis. <laughs> PJ, sweetie, I know we all just met you, but it seems like your visioning is a little less about finding your best self and a little more about murder. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. But here at Women's Group, we want to throw away the past. So what I want to know is not who was PJ, but who is PJ. Wow. Who is PJ? <laughs> PJ likes to laugh. Uh, PJ could be... A bit of a diva. Um, PJ should probably be easier on herself because she's a good woman. Uh, excuse me, PJ. Uh, what's that red dot on your chest? Does it follow me when I move? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, okay. How do you feel about gunfire in the home? Well, I did tell you to take your shoes off, so... Okay, I'm just gonna go now. I want to thank you for the lovely spread and having me in your home. 
and I cannot wait for the next meeting of women's group. <laughs> stuff. I don't care who did the dishes. I don't care who said what first. Dave. And Stacy, if you don't hear anything else I say here today, if you hear nothing else, at least hear this. Baby Jessica's still in that well, and we're the only ones who can stop her. <laughs> what? Every minute she's in there, she's getting more and more pissed off. <laughs> okay, I was like just about to drive off. <laughs> All I know is this. One should be the last person I see before I slip into a coma. And the first person I see when I get to hell! So you want me to die when you're in a coma? Shh. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Stacy, these, these bags, this is everything I own. I need to hide them from you. I got plans in here for a theme park that can rival Disney World. Heck, it could even rival Disneyland. Okay, well, they smell like calamari. Stacy, <laughs> it's not about the bags. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the bags. <laughs> Stacy. Sweet, sweet Stacy. You make me want to be a better man. What did you just say? I said, you make me want to be a better man. <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? It's how I say it, Stacy. It's how I've always said it. <sighs> Loboland. The theme park! It's called Loboland! It's like a pet cemetery, but for people! Okay, that's just a cemetery. Shh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Look, I guess in the end, I'm just a boy looking for a girl to ask her for $15,000. No, no, absolutely not. Stacy, when you need someone who truly loves you, Someone who truly cares about you. You can just look into their eyes and know everything will be okay. For me, that person is Robbie. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> sure. You may not be a perfect mate. He's got a good heart. He's still a cute mate. So maybe you're right, Stacy. Maybe I am crazy. Well, let me ask you this. Is it crazy to love someone so much and try to kill them? 100% Well, then lock me up, because that's exactly what I came here to do. Shut up. Dave, you dumb psycho. You had me a Lobo Land. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm the guy your principal warned you about, huh? You thought you could stop us? You thought you could silence our raps? You were wrong! You were wrong! Hood ah! milk, Koopa Loot! All right, I'm gonna need a little bit of audience participation for this one. If you're ready for hood milk, say hell yeah! Hell yeah! Say hell yeah! Hell yeah! You ready? Yeah! One, two, three, four. Hood milk coming back here to settle the score. Would you find a friend to be bought at the store? Hood milk can completely get hundred for more. Hood back on stage. Now he's back. He's all the rage. Can't keep me caged. Forget gift cards. I need a wage. And now they're coming for me. Stopping my art because I ate too much bean. It's real easy to see. One time got me hooked, so now I am a fiend. Disrespect my pack. I'm a break your jaw. Yeah, that's a fact through the Great War saw. Horse in my back. I'm a scream me ha. Looking for a rap to put that on jaw. Yo. Skirt, skirt. Man, my heart is kind of hurt. Kids fail in algebra too. And it's all because of Kurt. School free like VBS. Call him Ernie, call me Burt. In the hills like 21. No longer in a yurt. Now I can't stop. Going hard like a freight train. train. So don't stress. 
guys who go bald. Got the rogue game. Kinda hungry now. Gotta get that bone mane. I may not be perfect, but still I'm a human. Got one more, cause this is epic. Dank. Clogging your mind like I clog your septic. Tank. Gotta go fast, and I'm driving hectic. Crash. Going so. Got a new car, and I'm driving hectic. Crash. <laughs> now we're coming in first, and we won't be debated. It's clear by the cheering that the future never hated. Put life on the line, but still we got baited. Whole room on their feet, only judges underrated. You know I know just what you need. You should call me Maslow. Surrounded by a thousand beans, it's like we're in Camp Laszlo. Got me a fast flow, sipping a fast slow. What's the big deal? We went for real. Where's my cash flow? Hey! Yo's Alex Sharp out in the audience? Is he? Is he right there? This goes out to you. Alex Sharp, man, he's my brother. Yeah, I said that, didn't stutter. We some good kids with some big hearts got denied bags when we top charts! <laughs> so listen up, hear them calling me. Watch as I rap them nominally. Devouring beans appallingly. It's not over till you're on your knees. So flow kicking in and I feel BAM! I am the boss, yes I am. Chad! Got no man, got no gift cards, I am so mad! I need a man I can call it. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Coop. Yeah, you yeah. Okay, man? I, just one second. <laughs> you hide behind your company lies, and with it you tried to bring our demise, to grind us down till our dies will come back in kind. Our final reprise, I'm faded. I gotta do another line, I'm faded. Gonna get first prize, I'm graded. Your choice is ink and dine. Now I need to be sedated for the sake of you, your crew, and all mankind. Oh! Now just to give due clarity, we didn't get what we did with our popularity. So don't act like it was all for charity. The crap you spew is just a parody. Everyone can see through all those damn lies. So man, in the end, it's no real surprise. In a real contest, we would win first prize. It's a crime to disguise your lies. So like a phoenix, we will rise. Don't fear we hear your cheers and cries. And it's here that we decide what milk and coke can never die. Yo. <laughs> Okay, so let's make sure I got this right. You were attacked outside of the Rayburn's Players Workshop Theater on the night of Thursday the 5th, is that correct? That's right, sir. I was just walking down the street and someone hit me to the ground. Well, we think we got the guy, but the thing is we need to do a lineup. They're actually all actors at the theater. We just need to identify which one robbed you. Okay, got it. And I need to make sure. You said the assailant said, uh, let's make this quick. Give me everything you got. I have a knife. That's right. Okay, perfect. Bring him in. Hello, how are you? Glad to be here, thank you. Hey, thank you so much for letting us come in today. <laughs> okay, well I'm going to need each of you to step forward one at a time and read the line written on the card in front of you. Number one, go ahead. Yes, hello, hello. My name is Simon Baxter Boyley. I've got an extra headshot if anyone wants that. Um, I apologize, I'm a little nervous. Okay. Let's make this quick. Give me everything you got. I have a knife. Mm, that interesting taste. <laughs> Number two, step forward. Kurt Hoger. All right. Just say the line. I'm getting there. Let's make this quick. Give me everything you got. I have a knife. Okay, wow. There was so much going on in Number three. Oh, well, first off, love the script. Okay, I need to get like a motive here. Is this like a vengeance thing or? Just read what we gave you. Okay, I'll do vengeance. Let's make this quick. Give me the I got. I have a knife. My God, I'm so flat. What am I doing? Number four, step forward. I feel like this character's a woman. <laughs> it's not. Alright, well I'll do my best, but I can't help but channel some feminine energy. <laughs> Let's make this quick. Uh, give me everything you got. I have a number. <laughs> wow, bold! I never would have thought to go there. Well, you know, I like to explore and I really think gender is fluid. Absolutely! Oh boy. Well, kid, any of those sound familiar? I'm not really sure. Can I hear number three again? Okay, number three, step forward again. Okay, I'm gonna try to shake things up a bit, you know, do something different. 
Let's make this quick. Give me everything you got. I have a knife. Dude, that's amazing. I love that funny turn. We should sew right together sometime. Make our own thing or something. My friend Brian has a camera. Like two videos a week. We have no excuses, you guys. And we could do like a web video. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> number two, gentlemen, please. Number two, step forward. Can I walk into this? I'm gonna walk into this. Let's make this quick. Give me everything you got. I have a knife. Brother, that was awesome. Really? Still feels so stiff to me. Well, loosen up, man. Shoot a couple of vocal <laughs> arrows. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Look out! Look out! Hey! Hey! Stop that! <laughs> I'm gonna need each of you to step forward and read the line as yourselves this time. No funny business. Number one, please. Let's make this quick. Give me everything you got. I have a knife. <laughs> Let's make this quick. Give me everything you got. I have a knife. I'm not ready. You, you go, you go. Let's make this quick anyway. I mean, I mean, give me everything you got. I have a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make. I, I can't do it, I can't do it! I can't do it! Of course you can! You're great, man! What's wrong? I, I don't know, it's like this character's really person in my life story. I don't know if I can do it! You know what? Use it. Use it. <laughs> okay. I'll try. So hard, you guys. Alright. Let's make this quick! Give me everything you got! I have a knife! Well, why'd you do it? Are you some sort of jerk or something? It's my front wheel. What'd you think? That I was gonna drive home and not notice that it was stolen? <laughs> well, what are you then? Some sort of prick? Some sort of idiot? Some sort of thief? What would you do with just my front wheel anyways? What good would just one wheel be? You human loser. Well, why didn't you buy your own wheel if you wanted one so badly? That's what I did. <laughs> well, don't you think I needed that wheel? Well, what were you thinking? <laughs> Jerk. So there you have it, 
My client was five miles away from that bar playing poker with his friend, Mr. Sharp, the night of the murder. Yeah, that's it. I rest my case. All right, jurors, for the opening statements for both the defense and the prosecution. Mr. Douglas, you may I'll call your first witness. The prosecution calls Gregory Sharp to the stand. Hold on. Um, excuse me, Mr. Douglas. Has anyone ever told you that, well, quite frankly, you have the most beautiful eyelashes? <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I mean, this can't be the first time I'm hearing this. It's not, Your Honor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a pickle to be you, huh? Walking around town, bringing spring wherever you go. Okay, Your Honor, can we just call the witness, please? Of course. <laughs> May live? You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll tell the truth. <laughs> Mr. Sharp, where were you on the night of the 7th? Well, like I told the cops, it was poker night, and I was playing poker with my buddies. Including Mr. Bird? Yeah, yeah, he was there. So you're going to look me in the eyes. <laughs> These eyes. And tell me he was with you that night? I, uh... All night? Yeah, it was the poker. And... Mr. Sharp, was it then? Well, what do you want me to say? I want you to look at me. Come on, man. And tell me the truth. <laughs> all right, all right. He wasn't with me, and he's always talking about killing people. Come on, man! No further questions. Okay, objection. What is this with the eyelashes? I'm appalled by the prosecution here. Appalled? Or jealous. <laughs> appalled? This is not fair. Fine. The jury will do their best to not be influenced by the prosecutions. Gorgeous. <laughs> Inviting lashes. <laughs> they will also disregard the fact that the defense's eyelashes are clumpy and unremarkable. Fine. Uh, thank you. Mr. Sharp, when you were initially questioned by the police, you stated that Mr. Bird joined you for poker night at your apartment. In fact, he showed up early to help you set up. You even have leftover beers that he brought that night. Now, I'm sorry, My but... God! Okay, now he's directly influencing the jury. That is ridiculous, Your Honor. Permission to approach the bench? Oh, I like that very, very much. <laughs> oh, both of you. I could get you just barred for this. Manipulating a jury? I've never seen someone so blatantly disregard. So blatantly disregard protocol. I know. Oh my. There's something about you. Maybe it's your unorthodox methods. Maybe it's the way you carry yourself or. Things I think you should know. Your closest exit may be in the back. 
and the afterlife is just a boy in a black. Stop doing that! I will not be silent! What happened to you, Garrett? I woke up, Sabrina! I woke the hell up! Well, Spencer worked very hard on this rap, so cut it out. Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am, you are in fact in an exit route. Oh no, my question's for Garrett. So when you die, you're just gone forever? Bingo! Ma'am, why? And religion is just a delusion that shields us from that impermanence. I can recommend a few podcasts if you're interested. Can we please just get through the rap? Please, thank you, please. I agree. Garrett, the freak show ends now. Sir, would you please bring that sweet ass beat back in one more time? Oh, it is pretty sweet. Thanks, it's just something I... <laughs> <laughs> Now let's discuss an important task. How to apply your oxygen mask. Look out so low when you start to stop. Well, you gotta move fast. There's no time to stop. Pull well, them over your head, strap the top ends tight. Make sure to be yours before helping your friends. So far, you're all understanding. But you can do something in a water landing. The cushion on your seat can be used as a float, slide down a ramp, and into a boat. Blood stains the water and you start to scream. What benevolent God would allow such a thing? Is there a miracle on board? When I say death, just yet. Oh, honey, he will. Where's Mr. Patterson anyways? I'm excited to meet him. Oh, he's just upstairs finishing up some work. Now, Kendra, there's three things you need to know about my husband. He's the most brilliant man I've ever met. His stories can be a little dry, though. And he has the body of a baby. Uh, what's the third thing? Uh, ahoy there! Hope everyone brought their appetites. There's the man of the hour. Be down in just a sec. Oh, oh, see Daisy! Mitchell! So glad you can make it! Those quarterly numbers really are a cause for celebration. Honey, what <laughs> am I looking at? You're looking at the man who's gonna make me CFO. Richard, come join us at the table, sweetheart. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 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 oh. Boss man walking! <laughs> oh. oh, Nancy brought out the good china. This is a gift from Warren Buffett. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Mitchell, why are you sucking my plate? I, I do not have an answer. <laughs> so, Nancy, how long have you two been married? Well, it'll be ten years in October. Mitchell, has Richard ever told you the story of our engagement? Oh, uh, he hasn't, no. I actually have a lot of questions about your relationship. Well, we were on vacation in Greece, and we were on this beautiful boat cruise. <laughs> and I just knew Richard was going to propose, and when he did, he ate the ring! I did, I ate it! The next morning, I found it in his diaper, and I said yes! <laughs> Shall we eat? Sure, that story made me real hungry. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, looks like we need w one more chair? Nope! Got my own. <laughs> so, Mitchell, how this quarterly number's looking? No, no, no. No work talk at the table. Actually, Richard and I have a bit of an announcement. That's right. We're having a baby! Oh, wow. For real? Yeah, you know, I'm excited but nervous. I don't really know anything about being a mother. Uh, uh... <laughs> I wouldn't be worried. You're going to be a great mother. Come here, you. Uh, can we uh, maybe just, just get a little toast here? C congratulations, you two. Oh, uh, toast. Oh, uh, look, a lemon. I've been meaning to try one of these. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's tart. It seems like you don't like it, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, no, I do. It's just it's strong. Uh, well, you two better go. I'm Tai Tai. I want to go Nai Nai. It's 7.15. <laughs> I know. That's so late for him. Come on, Richard. Let's say goodnight. Oh, no. High five. Come on. High five, Richard. This is so 
weird, he usually does it. High five! High five, bud. Come on. Good job. You too, Kendrick. Come on, high five. High five. Good job! Oh, and Mitchell, I'll see you in the morning, CFO. Thank you, baby boss! Oh, shit! Go, 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 go! Looks like someone's feeling a little frisky tonight. That's right. How about a bath? I'll go fill up the kitchen sink. <laughs> As you can imagine, you are of great interest to both the secular and religious communities. Yes, we believe we've had an encounter with the real Santa Claus. I mean, this is nuts, man. We're just ordinary people here who heard footsteps on Christmas Eve. And now, we're a Christmas miracle. Indeed. Now tell us, what happened after you awoke? Well, you see, me and my girl woke up Christmas morning, went downstairs, and there's Santa Claus standing in the living room. Real as rain. And he said, come with me to the North Pole. And so next thing we know, we're on his sleigh with the reindeer and everything. Miraculous. And you, Miss Rafferty? Yup, so, little different for me. So I'm crashing in their guest room, right? And I come down later and they're gone. And I'm greeted by a nine foot tall goat man named Crinkle Mouse, who, uh, according to some German fairy tale, is some Santa helper. And he points a hoof at me and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, kind of get the hint that I should come with. And were you taken to Santa's sled? Oh, no, no. Kringle Mouse, turns out, travels by dog sled. Which sounds fun and all, but then he straps a harness on me and throws me in with the frickin' dog team. And these dogs don't fly. They run. And if you think you can't run as fast as a dog, you're right. <laughs> a minute in, I fall, get dragged for a mile over a forest floor, and my sweats get yanked off. So now there's nothing between the ground and my cooter and tutor. <laughs> Let's just say it wasn't the worst time I've had on all fours. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> now what happened when you arrived at the North Pole? Well, you wouldn't believe it, but we were taking the Santa's workshop, and it was beautiful. It smelled like gingerbread, and my beard still smells like it, ma'am. And Mrs. Claus brought out hot cocoa. It warmed my tummy and my heart. What? These two were in a freaking Disney movie. Meanwhile, Crinkle Mouse takes me back to the reindeer stables, hands me a shovel, and goes, You work! And also, I got the pleasure of meeting Mrs. Crinkle Mouse, who looks more like a ram than a goat. And she's either jealous or a les, because she starts ramming my knocker. Oh, pardon me, Sharon. Oh, oh, hey, okay, okay. Get. Remarkable. And what happened next in the workshop? Well, you wouldn't believe it, but the elves came out and we all sang songs. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of these short little guys with really cute toesies and nosies. <laughs> yeah, the stables have one elf. He looks exactly like Gollum and smells like hard boiled eggs. And I swear to God, this little bastard's name was Shucked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, did he also sing and dance? Oh, no. Shark, turns out, is in charge of the reindeer, and he tells me it's time to check him for worms. So cut to, I'm holding on to a lady reindeer while he's poking around. And keep in mind, these reindeer fly. So when they buck, I'm 20, 30 feet off the ground, and I'm still rocking zero pants here. So now my hog taker and my log maker are on full display. <laughs> completely understand why Crinkle Mouse and company aren't showing up on any Coca-Cola Christmas cans. Gosh, it doesn't sound like you had as good of a time as we did. Oh yeah, Doug? Yeah? Well, how are you returning? <laughs> well, they sprinkled this magic dust and then the whole workshop was kind of dissolved around us. And we were back in our living room Christmas morning. We went outside, loaded up the trailer with Christmas ham, and made sweet, tender love for the first time in six long years. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways. Yeah, so does Shart. Because when it's time for me to go home, Crinkle Mass hands him a magic stick, and this son of a bitch steps up to the plate and <laughs> cracks me in the back of the knee with it, and I dissolve into a closed bank of America 15 miles from my house. <laughs> So I trip some sort of alarm, and the cops show up. And mind you, I'm still pantsless. 
So now I'm spending Christmas morning in the back of a squad car with my grassy knoll and my gassy hole hanging out. <laughs> and I'm thinking, damn it, Colleen, you're becoming your mother. Fascinating. Do you ever think you'll see these spirits ever again? No, but I feel St. Nick in my heart. Yeah, and I see him whenever I see a child smile. Yeah, and I smell hard all day, so shark can't be too far off. <laughs> I think that little bastard followed me home. Oh boy, great. What the hell am I gonna feed that thing? I think I can speak for all of us when we say we love the water here at Frontier. <laughs> Oh, well that one's easy. 
uh, that I will meet a woman someday and get married. <laughs> yes, I put that a woman who is Menarche will come to ensnare him, uh, leaving me to perish in my loneliness and filth. Alone, alone, alone. Also Lyme disease. <laughs> want to give that answer points, but that's 50 points. When I smile, <laughs> my little prince smiles, my happy boy is a gorgeous boy. Okay, okay, so my producers are asking me to limit your songs to no songs. <laughs> Summer, what's your mom's biggest fear? Um, probably spiders. Oh, darn, I said that I would get into a fight with my husband in front of her friends. Oh, yikes, no points. But I hear ya, my mom and dad used to fight all the time. My dad was not afraid of a drink. <laughs> so, Mason and Chanel. Uh, yeah, we forfeit, I mean, we're not gonna beat that. Look at them, they're, they're I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to beat them. I don't believe they've ever slept in separate rooms. Um, we're going to take a quick break before the second round. We'll be right back. <laughs> I see you have some spinach there, though. Oh, yeah, I love to put this stuff in my green shakes. I'm always looking for the best new thing for my body. No, I only eat all natural, whole grain, nothing processed, plant-based food. Oh, yeah? Me too. I take pride in it, so. Huh. Where are those greens got there? Oh, it's kale. It's a lot better for you than spinach, but it doesn't taste anywhere near as good. So I could see why maybe you can handle it. <laughs> I can handle it. I bet you've never tried this stuff. It's peel pit seed juice. It's made from only the peels, pits, and seeds of the fruits. Because those are the most nutritious parts of the fruit I see. I bet you've never tried this. It's dark chocolate that is so dark it's made from 10% cacao. That's a terrible percentage. And 90% the dirt the beans were grown in. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's so bitter that your taste buds physically reject it. I just swear every night after dinner, even though my body's natural response is to regurgitate and burn it. Well, if you tried tree bark milk, I pour it on everything I eat, even though it tastes like shame feels. I pull onions out of the earth and eat them like apples. My body is so alkaline that I can literally drink battery acid. Okay, okay. Well, sometimes I just go to the periodic table and I pick an element and I eat that element, okay? Can't get more natural than that. Oh, please. When I'm so hungry after dinner, I go outside and lick a mountain. Oh, yeah? Well, sometimes I just eat live worms straight from the ground. The live part is crucial because they're sold to prevent aging. Well, free helps you metabolize faster. So I drink all my protein shakes in a pit full of snakes. Same reason I do lunges in graveyards. Do you ever eat fish for the omega-3s? Of course, I drink eight glasses of fish oil every day. Well, I cut out the middleman and just hook the fish right up to my veins. I eat beans from depressed farmers because their psychological issues are great for your skin. I catch birds in my jaws in mid-flight. I eat rocks from woodland streams. I eat algae out of my neighbor's pool. I lick the leaves off of the forest floor. I eat particles off of expensive birds. I eat the southeastern wind. I swallow meteorites as they fall from the sky. I literally shit. Great. 
Now, you both seem like very socially apt people, so I want you to turn to one another and talk to each other. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Well, um, exhibit A, my friends. Flirting does not come naturally to us all. Some of us are born flirtatious right from the womb, and others of us are better at algebra, or whittling, or grave digging is another one. Uh, so today we're going to work on ice breaking, okay? Breaking that ice. All right, now everybody stand up, stand up. Now I want you all to close your eyes and imagine you're in a crowded club. There's music and dancing, and you spot someone across the room you'd like to flirt with. <laughs> he or she is very attractive. <laughs> then finally your eyes meet. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, maintaining eye contact. Maintaining eye contact is crucial for any flirtatious exchange. Okay, now I want you all to open your eyes and show me the face that will say, well, hello you, let's get together. All right, now everybody show me your face. <laughs> uh, okay, hands down, Jason, hands down, okay. It might help if you were facing the girl you want to talk to. Oh, uh, hey, hey, Jeremy. You, you gotta lighten up a little. They're just women. Okay, okay. Wow. Uh, okay. Hey, hey, Natalie. Is that your natural face? Or do you smell something awful? No, this is my saucy face. <laughs> Okay, uh, what face do you make when you do smell something? Perfect. Okay, let's keep it at that one. Okay. Steven, what are you doing? Where did you get those bubbles? What if you don't have bubbles in the crowded club? No, no. I always have bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll discuss that later. Sit down. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, Mallory? You maybe want to have a little less rage in your face. Y you look a little murderous, okay? Uh, maybe mix that rage with surprise? <laughs> surprise and fear? <laughs> surprise and shame? Okay, uh, comparatively, that's better. Why don't we work on our alluring faces more next week? Okay, let's move on. Let's get Matt and Natalie up here, okay? Stand up, stand up. Today we're going to work on approaching the person you'd like to flirt with. This is very simple, okay? Now Matt, I want you to approach Natalie as if she were a girl you'd like to flirt with, okay? Let's see it. Matt! 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 <laughs> Natural. <laughs> Natalie, you got to hold your ground, okay? Matt! Matt! Stop moving your arms. Matt, you have to move your arms a little bit. No, 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 no. Sit down, sit down, both of you. Okay, let's move on. Jason, why don't you come up here? Uh, Mallory, you too. Okay, humor is a great icebreaker. He makes a clever joke and she laughs at it and maybe uses this as an opportunity to establish some playful physical contact, okay? Say something witty to her, Jason. You are a woman. <laughs> I would like to flirt at you. That's great. That's great. I'm supposed to laugh at that? It wasn't funny. Okay, um, Mallory, it, it doesn't matter if it's funny, okay? He makes a clever joke and you laugh hard and give him a playful nudge. Shows you're interested, okay? And Jason, why don't we try something with a little more gusto this time? Maybe with a punchline? Okay, now let's get a little closer. Little closer, Valerie. Okay. I am speaking to you right now! <laughs> then you laugh. <laughs> now some playful physical contact. Oh my god! <laughs> Not so hard. Like Us? <laughs> Not in the face so much. Oh no, it's happening. Not too playfully in the shoulder, Mallory. Playfully. This feels natural! Oh, Sit down! Jason, you stay up here. <laughs> Valerie, why don't I show you how to do it, okay? It goes like this. <laughs> Jason, you are 
Thank you. No, 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 no. Don't ever. No, uh, don't feel bad. You're very charming. No, I'm not singling you out, okay? You all are very charming. People. <laughs>